Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today we have a big one for you. We are making a full Christmas dinner. This is going to be the ultimate vegan Christmas dinner. We've got your main centerpiece, which is going to be incredible. It's really going to be a showstopper on the Christmas table. And of course, it's not just the main, we've got all of the lovely vegan sides and trimmings as well. So let's just get straight into our first recipe. We're gonna start with the main and it is gonna be a festive nut roast wreath. First thing that we need to do is peel and cube this because we're gonna be roasting it. We're now gonna roast these cubes until they're soft. Whilst the squash is roasting, we're gonna get on with the rest of the nut roast filling and that starts off with some leek, some garlic and lentils. So you're going to fry off the leeks and garlic, add in the tinned lentils, some stock, some lovely orchini mushrooms, which are going to give it a really nice, deep, rich flavour. And then the next step is adding some lovely herbs. Whilst the stock is reducing on the hob, you could go ahead and start your cranberry glaze. And then when that's done, you can just leave it to one side. Next is adding all of the butternut squash with the nuts into your lentil mix. We're now going to start putting the nut rose filling into our tin and for this recipe we're using a wreath tin just because it's extra Christmassy but if you don't have a wreath shaped tin then a classic loaf tin will work. You might want to do two loaf tins because this is enough to fill a whole uh, wreath or you could half the recipe if you're just doing one loaf tin. One of the key things to getting a great texture and consistency with your nut roast is making sure that all the ingredients are really compacted down together so that it firms up and holds really well otherwise you can end up with a very crumbly nut roast. Our nut roast filling is in, we have compacted it really well. I've used my fists to get in there and to really make sure that it's nice and compacted. And we've just covered the top with some foil. This is gonna stop the top from burning and help keep some of the moisture in there so that it's not dry because no one wants a dry nut roast. It's always a little nerve wracking when you've cooked something in a tin and then you need to do the big reveal, but it's all worked beautifully. It came out perfectly. So yeah, very happy. Can't wait to try it. This is our gorgeous, if I say so myself, festive jeweled nut roast wreath. It's looking absolutely spectacular. A lot of it goes on in the toppings as always. We've added on some fresh cranberries, some fresh herbs, and then we've done the caramelized um, candy pecans as well. Hope you guys try this for your Christmas dinner. I really think even if you're not a meat eater, if you've got friends and family coming over who don't eat meat they're gonna want to try a little bit of this they're gonna they're gonna love it it's full of protein delicious nuts flavors spices all sorts of lovely things um and it's gonna look absolutely gorgeous in the middle of your christmas table this recipe is actually in our ebook that we shared with you guys maybe over a year ago now but it's got some really delicious recipes including this Christmas festive nut roast wreath so if you haven't bought it already um, it'd be a really nice thing for you to have for Christmas or to give to a friend and we'll put the link down below in the description. We're going to be making a celeriac mash and I feel like celeriac is often a veg that gets forgotten about. You'll often find swede mash or something like that on a roast dinner plate, but we absolutely love celeriac. So we're gonna be doing a celeriac mash today um, and blending it up with lots of lovely festive flavors. So it's gonna be a nice kind of um, alternative root veg to your potatoes, your carrots, your parsnips, and you can't have too many vegetables on your Christmas dinner plate, in my opinion. We're gonna start by boiling our celeriac and first we need to peel it. You can use a regular peeler just to peel the top half and then for the knobbly bits at the bottom, I find it easier to use a knife to get that bit off. And then after that, you're gonna wash your celeriac just to make sure all of the kind of grimy, muddy bits are off. And then we're gonna chop it up into small cubes. We boiled 
cause our slurry act for about 15 minutes until it was nice and soft. So that's ready now. And we're gonna add in the rest of our ingredients, starting with some garlic. You don't need to be too exact with your chopping because everything is gonna get blended. So we've just kind of roughly chopped our garlic like this. You could also grate it in with like a microplane or something like that as well. We want this to be extra creamy and decadent because it is Christmas. So we're gonna be adding in three different vegan dairy products. We've got our vegan milk, we're using oat because it's kind of the most creamy. Um, then we're gonna add a vegan soya cream. You could use a double cream, an oat cream, um, anything like that, but this is the one that we've got. And then we're also gonna add in some vegan butter as well. So it's gonna be super indulgent and extra special. We're gonna add in a big pinch of salt and this is very much just to your tastes. It also depends on what dairy products you're using um, because they have different salt levels as well. The Christmas dinner isn't just about flavor. You also want it to look really nice because it is such a special occasion. It's always nice to think about the toppings and the ways that you can make it look that extra bit more special. So we're gonna drizzle on some vegan cream, a little bit of thyme and some nutmeg as well, which is maybe an optional step, but um, we love nutmeg. So gonna have a little bit of that on the top as well. Our next recipe is a classic Christmas dinner recipe. We're gonna be doing a spiced red cabbage and apple. So we did start prepping this already um, because obviously when you are doing something like a Christmas dinner, it's all about the timing. So you're not necessarily gonna make one recipe and then the next one you can kind of fit in all the different steps around each other. What's great about this recipe is that it kind of cooks itself so you can just leave it on the hob on a low simmer with a lid on and you can get on with other things in the kitchen whilst it cooks. Our red cabbage has been cooking on the hob for about half an hour with all the spices and the cider and now we're going to add in our apple so we're going to do one apple just sliced up nice you could also cube it or grate it whatever your preference is and then we're going to add that in for the second half of the cooking. The kitchen is full of so many lovely smells right now. I just want to eat it all, but we need to get on with the next recipes. We're going to be making some Brussels sprouts and they often get a bad rep. I think that's because people are cooking them wrong. They're boiling them, then not putting any delicious flavor in there. So we're going to show you and hopefully persuade any of you sprout doubters that they are delicious and they must be on your Christmas plate. The first thing we're gonna do is peel our sprouts and this can definitely be done ahead of time to save you prep on the day and you just wanna peel off the outer leaves and then we're actually gonna be slicing these in half for this recipe. After you've prepped your sprouts, the first thing you're gonna do is cook your vegan bacon bits. You're gonna melt some butter in a pan and then just fry them up and leave them to one side whilst you took the sprouts. We're gonna flip all of our sprouts so they're face down in the pan, and this is so they get nice and browned and a little bit crispy. Next, we're gonna add in our Marmite, and this might be a little bit controversial, um, but it's essentially just delicious, savory, salty goodness. If you don't know what Marmite is, then it's essentially a yeast extract, and that might sound a little bit strange to people that have never tried it, but it's very much a beloved spread or condiment that we have here in the UK. Often we'll have it on toast, but it's also used in cooking as well to add that kind of nice savory um, flavor. Because it's just Charlie and I, we've only got a small serving of sprouts and obviously it's also going to be one of many sides on your Christmas dinner plate. So you could definitely double the recipe, triple the recipe, however many people you're cooking for and however many sides you are doing. We're now going to make our root veg and no Christmas dinner would be complete without roasted parsnips and carrots. So we're gonna be doing them lovely and sweet roasted ones with maple syrup, orange juice, and mustard, and a little 
tip and trick when you're cutting your parsnips because they're a bit of a odd shape is to do a little slice in the thick end about halfway down you don't want to overcook it so the ends go too crispy and burnt but then your thick ends are hard so that just helps get the heat all the way through after prepping all of your carrots and parsnips you're going to want to make a seasoning so in a little bowl we're going to add in some olive oil orange juice maple syrup whole grain mustard salt pepper and then some fresh herbs we're going to be using a few sprigs of rosemary but you could use thyme or sage or anything like that but because we've used some of the other herbs in other dishes we thought we'd use rosemary because we've not used that yet for our christmas dinner So one of the best parts of any roast has got to be the roast potatoes. But everyone's got their own preferences and their own family recipes and their own way of making it. So we're not gonna take you through our way of making it. In fact, the one that we make is very similar to a Jamie Oliver recipe that we will link down below. So just as a little side thing from our Christmas dinner recipes, um, we bought some vegan pigs and blankets from Sainsbury's, they're the plant pioneers ones. But we thought we'd do a little taste test review see what they're like it's kind of the same every year in that the sausages are good but the bacon needs work just a quick roundup give it an out of 10. i would say like a seven out of ten We really hope that you've enjoyed watching this video and that you make some of these recipes for yourself and have a delicious Christmas dinner like we will. Let us know in the comments which ones you might be making for your Christmas dinner. Hopefully all of them. Hopefully you think they all sound and look delicious. I can't wait to recreate this all again in a few weeks time. Yeah. So actual Christmas. We've got one more video before Christmas and the new year comes around and make sure you hit subscribe because we've got plenty of veganuary content coming for the new year as well. Yes, all sorts of videos, be all new recipes, new tips and all that kind of thing. So hit subscribe and we will see you in our next video. Bye.